Hello, this is Amanda from Roland. I'm here with Derek Murdoch, accomplished bassist who's played for the likes of Dr. Dre, B.B. King, Natalie Cole, and on The Tonight Show with Kevin Eubanks. Thanks so much for coming in today. Uh, thanks for having me. Maybe you could start by telling us a little bit about your beginnings and how you became a bass player. I used to listen to my father playing records all the time, and he would turn the bass up, like, just mega bass, you know, no treble, just bass, you know? And I'd be upstairs in my room, and I can hear nothing but bass all the time. So that's what kind of drew me into, like, um, you know, wanting to play bass. I mean, he would play all these R&B records, you know, James Brown and, you know, Cool and the Gang and all that stuff. And so I heard, like, all these bass lines in my head. So, you know, when I finally got a bass, when I was about 11, I, it was kind of easy for me to start learning the bass lines because I kind of had them in my head, you know. It was kind of real, real easy to figure out, you know. And then I started um, hanging with some friends, and they kind of got me into, like, Jimi Hendrix. They kind of got me into rock, you know. And, you know, so I kind of grew up listening to R&B and rock, you know. Very cool. You grew up in Philadelphia? Yeah, West correct? Philadelphia, yeah. Was um, that music scene, did that influence you as, as well, or did you play with some people in that area? Well, not until later. I played with a couple of R&B artists, um, a guy by the name of Miles J. And then I hooked up with a guy named Michael Pedersen Jr., who was like, uh, he's a sax player, and he was doing a lot of sessions at Philadelphia International. And, you know, I used to listen to his band a lot. He had like a fusion band. And um, I kind of hooked up with him later. He had a drummer named Daryl Brown who used to play with Stanley Clark. He's a doctor now. He, he turned me on to a lot of fusion music, you know, back then. Mm -hmm. So I got into like the fusion thing later on. When was the moment or the time where you decided, you know, to make it your career, you know, life's uh, become a pro? Actually pretty late in life, not until like 17. You know, I started out, um, you know, playing a little bit and then I kind of put it down and got into like football, you know, hanging out in the street and all that kind of stuff. And then later on, um, when I moved to uh, Willow Grove, which is like on the outskirts of Philadelphia, I met a guy by the name of Tommy Campbell and Tony Smith. Tony Smith being a bass player, Tommy Campbell being the drummer. They actually got me into wanting to play it full time. Those, those guys are like incredible. <laughs> How does the VB99 fit into the various musical styles and performances that you do playing bass? Oh man, um, um, it allows me to come up with this, different sounds that I've, I like. Uh, this one sound that I really like um, is the Music Man simulation. And um, I used to kid around with a, with a, with a friend of mine you know, I, I was playing Fender Jazz at the time, and I was like, oh, man, I wish I could just, like, wish I had a knob that I can push to make my um, Fender Jazz turn into, like, a Music Man sound. And we used to joke about that all the time. And, and then, you know, Roland finally came out with that. I was like, so I was like, oh, man, this is it right there. This is, this is it. I really enjoy, like, pulling that up at times when we're playing, like, some tunes. You know, so a lot of times Kevin likes to play some jams. He'll just start, you know, playing something, and, you know, you got to hear what it is and all that, and then you got to jump in. I would always like, you know, turn this Music Man sound on, and he would like that, you know. So this is this is one of my favorite ones on here. What advantages do you find using the VB99? Easy access, you know, to the sounds. I really love that. I really love this feature here, you know, which allows me to, like, um, access the sounds really quickly. That's, that's the main thing for me. Other than the Roland VB99, are there any other Roland and Boss products that you use? Yeah, I like the um, GT10B and the um, RC20XL. I love that a lot. Very nice. Yeah. I have fun with those. So who are who are some of your musical influences? James Brown. 
Jimi Hendrix, uh, Cool from Cool and the Gang, you know. Um, who else? Oh, I later got into like Jocko, Stanley Clark, um, Upright Players, Niels, um, Orsted Pedersen. I kind of got into a lot of bass players. And, you know, as I you know, started getting older and, and, and started listening to different types of music, I was just always listening to the bass players. Some of them I didn't even know who they were, you know? I just liked the way they played. So I'm curious, when you listen to a, to a record usually or a song, is, do you listen to the bass more than anything else? In the early days, yes, that's all I would listen to was the bass, you know? And then later on, you know, after talking to, um, you know, a couple of people, they got me into like listening to like horn, horn parts and keyboard parts, guitar parts and all that kind of stuff. You know, when I started playing bass like full time, I started playing in clubs, you know, around the Philadelphia area. And then later I, I moved to Atlantic City where there was a lot of casinos and stuff like that. And at the time there was like a lot of work there for musicians. Mm -hmm. So everybody would flock there from Philadelphia, New York, all over to like, you know, work in these casinos and stuff like that. And that was kind of good for me because <clears throat> um, it kind of helped me to play all different types of music because that's, you know, what they had going on down there. You know, they had like Dixieland bands down there, R&B bands, rock bands, you know, Latin bands and stuff like that. So that was like a fun time for me because I got a chance to play all different types of music. So you toured with different um, groups around the area, the Atlantic Actually, area? Actually, I wasn't touring there. I was just working around town, you know, playing in the small clubs. And then when I went to Atlantic City, I started playing in all those casinos there, the Sands, you know, Taj Mahal. You know, all of those casinos they had down there, resorts, you know, it was just a fun time. I didn't start really touring until I moved to, um, I moved to New York for a little bit. And um, I got a chance to, you know, work with some R&B artists. I had this job working on the Spirit of New York boat, which was a real cool gig, you know. And uh, that gig was cool because they allowed me to sub out all the time. So whenever I got a gig with uh, this guy, Miles, you know, they would let me sub it out, which was really cool, you know. Did you have a favorite gig or group you worked with in Atlantic City? Yeah, there were actually there were a couple of them actually. One girl, I think her name was Joanne Sansom. She she was like um, a jazz singer, but she did like a lot of uh, fusion stuff too. And we would um, they would allow us to play like two fusion tunes, you know, before she came on. And uh, so we would play like some Weather Report and you know all that you know good stuff. <laughs> What was your experience like working on The Tonight Show? Oh man, scary at first. Scary at first, because <clears throat> when I first found out I was going to be doing it, you know, I was thinking about that. I'm like, okay, I got the gig, you know, I was real, real happy and everything. And, uh, and I, I thought about it, I'm like, oh man, I'm going to be playing with Marvin Smitty Smith, you know, and Kevin Eubanks and, and Jerry Atkins, who played with Billy Cobham and you know, all, all, all these great musicians, you know? So it was a little scary at first, but actually, you know, when I got there and, and they were real um, nice to me and real patient and, um, you know, they made me feel real comfortable. What was, do you think, the trickiest thing about playing bass for The Tonight Show? Just having all my sensibilities, you know? Sometimes, well, a lot of times, Kevin would play like a line and I would have to follow him. And I only had like seconds to, to like learn the line. So that was kind of scary to me, you know? But after a while, it was like second nature. Do you have a favorite Jay Leno story? <laughs> I do, actually. Um, there's this place called Philly's Best. It's a cheesesteak place in Burbank. So I was there eating one night. It was about 8 o'clock. And Jay comes rolling up with his uh, assistant. I guess he was just coming from his um, garage where he you know, works on his cars and stuff. And uh, so he comes in. And he teases me because, you know, I, at the time I, I was <clears throat> on a diet. And so when he pulled up, he seen me doing like this, mouth wide open with a cheesesteak, you know. And he's like laughing at me. And so he comes in, he sits down. And um, so we were talking. And he orders a cheesesteak with double meat, right? And I'm like, wow, double meat. He's going to tear this thing up. So he starts to eat it. And, and he like inhaled the thing. I'm like looking at him, I, I couldn't believe it, right? <laughs> he just inhaled it. And then he ordered another one. 
you know, I was only like halfway done with my, you know, my little steak, you know. He orders another one and inhales that one. And I, I, was, I was just like, I can't believe you just did that. He just laughed at me, you know. <laughs> what would you say is your number one thought when you go on stage for a performance? Well, first thing I do is just try to get rid of the nervousness because I'm always a little nervous when I go up there, you know. And then uh, just make sure, again, make sure I have all my sensibilities, make sure I'm, you know, just ready to go. You've worked with artists such as Dr. Dre, B.B. King, Chuck Berry, Peter Frampton, Michael Bolton, Aaron Neville, and Natalie Cole. Is there anyone else you would want to work with? Sting. I love Sting. I always wanted to play with him. Yeah, he's just one of them. I mean, there's a bunch of people, but mainly Sting. So Tonight Show obviously has gone through a lot of transitions recently. Um, what are you working on currently? I was doing a bunch of sessions for a while, and now that I have a bunch of time, I'm, I'm thinking about um, doing a CD, like, kind of like an R&B one, and I want to do like a, a, like a fusion one. I've always wanted to do a fusion CD. So I have a couple of tunes. I have about four tunes that I have already. What would you say is the biggest change that evolving guitar technology has made to the way you play bass? Um, I've always been able to adapt to that, but I, I remember when, um, you know, there was a time where I only played four string, right? Well, a lot of people played four string at the time, and then, you know, they came out with the synthesizers back then. That kind of put bass players out of work for a minute, and so um, that's when they came out with the five strings and stuff like that, and so um, that was kind of weird for me because it took me a while to get adjusted to playing five string. What would you say to up and coming bass players who are trying to make their way in the music business? Yeah, just keep an open mind about the music. Always keep an open mind about it, you know, and have a great attitude, you know. Plain and simple. Mm -hmm.